until late January. This is the Speaker of the House of North Carolina's mm -hmm. House of Representatives, Joe Hackney. Welcome to North Carolina now. Happy to be here. Is this a riding off into the sunset or is this a new adventure for you? It's a new adventure, new adventure. And uh, it'll be a new challenge, a different challenge. Uh, I'll be able to debate on the floor. You know, it's tough to stand up there and not be able to uh, debate, uh, particularly if you're, you know, you're used to debating all those years like I was. So uh, it's going to be, um, that part of it will be fun. Do you, do oftentimes, when you're, I've never been a representative, do you just stand up there knowing how the battle's going to end, but you've just got to speak your mind and put it on the record? Well, being in a minority can be a little bit like being a criminal defense attorney, you know? Uh, uh, it's all stacked against you. You know the chances are that you're going to lose, but you, you, you fight the fight. Uh, and um, so um, there are some similarities there, and I've done that too. What did you learn as House Speaker that you didn't know about this chamber, even though you've been here since 81? Well, um, being Speaker is, a, is an, one of those experiences uh, that you cannot prepare for. Frankly, really, you uh, you cannot. the The pressures are more intense than you could have imagined. The demands on your time are more uh, intense than uh, you could have imagined, uh, and the responsibility is greater than you could imagine. And so, uh, it's uh, in, in uh, you become uh, more of a manager also because the uh, speaker of necessity has pretty good sized staff. In addition to that, you're signing off on uh, pretty much everything that goes around, goes on down here in terms of uh, employment and personnel and parking and all those sorts of things. Um, and um, you're getting notified of uh, anything critical, uh, any critical issue that's happening in state government. So um, it's a, um, a, a very challenging and stimulating uh, position. Is that a 40-hour work week? Is it five days a week? Uh, what will t Representative Tom Tillis be getting himself into in a tangible sense? I sent him a, a, p a piece of, I saw in one of the magazines the other day about uh, time to think, time to go off and be isolated and to think. And of course, that's what I use my farm uh, for. Uh, when I go down there, there's usually no one around but me and the cows. So um, um, anybody who's in that position, uh, w whether you're a governor or leading the Senate or leading the House, uh, it's one of those positions where you need uh, time to think things through, uh, not make snap decisions, not react too uh, quickly, moderate your public statements, uh, those sorts of things. What do you expect your relationship to be with incoming Speaker Tillis? I expect uh, to um, uh, advise him only when asked. Okay. Uh, I expect him to um, um, uh, lead his side and uh, on institutional matters which are important to all of us to, to be our advocate and our leader and I'll help him do that. The biggest issues you're seeing coming up right off the bat on January 26, what will that be? Well, the biggest issues uh, will be, uh, in every session, it's the budget. Uh, in addition, we have that political exercise known as redistricting this time, which is always a, uh, a very interesting uh, uh, session when we have that. The last time we did redistricting, I think we had a, uh, co speakers, mm -hmm. and so we produced a plan uh, that, that was a challenge in and in itself. I was in the redistricting um, more as a victim than anything else in the 80s and, uh, and uh, then the 90s, 2000, so, uh, so uh, this is my fourth one. With redistricting coming up, you know, I, I remember Republicans in prior sessions wanting an independent redistricting commission and Democrats in the majority didn't hear much out of you uh, when you would ask about it, but now I hear Democrats saying it's a pretty good idea. What do you think of that issue? Well, we've had fun with that, you know, uh, because the Republicans have had a decades-long uh, advocacy for a uh, Citizens Commission. The truth is Citizens Commissions are just as political. Uh, there have been studies, just as political as if we do it ourselves, but, but the uh, uh, Republicans have always been for doing that, and now uh, that 
that they are in charge, they don't want to do it. So, uh, of course, I'm going to have some fun with that. Of course, the Democratic caucus in the House is smaller, much smaller than it was last session. Uh, what kind of Democrat thrived in the last election, and, and what flavor or, or, or philosophy of Democrat was the one that got turned out of office? Well, the places where we lost, uh, with I think one exception, are re either Republican areas or uh, swing areas trending Republican. So um, uh, we held our own in the Democratic districts with one or two exceptions. Um, in a tied year, a, uh, a sweeping tide kind of year, um, the makeup of the district is pretty much all important, and I think that's what happened this time. So did you see this coming? Yes. Yes, you could see it. Uh, you could hope it wasn't there and hope the magnitude would be smaller and hope the, some of the polls were incorrect, and of course some of them were incorrect. But uh, um, you could see that a tide was running. Um, the tide in the last uh, two weeks was uh, much stronger than uh, anticipated. we anticipated it would be. And of course you get that in a tide year. I remember when uh, Jimmy Carter was defeated um, for president, um, the tide turned in the last three days, very much against him. Uh, the, maybe uh, it was uh, turning somewhat before that, but it really started to roll in the last uh, three, four days last week. And I think we, was, we saw that uh, as well. Next time we see you, you'll be House Minority Leader Joe Hackney, but as of now, Speaker, thanks for being on North Carolina now. We'll be seeing you in the weeks and months to come. Look forward to seeing you again.